per speculum. So the station per speculum smear. Okay, the station is, you are in gynecology. Ankit Kumar uh, has missed his classes for pelvic examination. Please teach him how to do speculum examination. A special note, do not let him to do the examination. That's the scenario that Ankit Kumar is a final year medical student. He has missed the classes for perspeculum examination. Go and teach him how to do perspeculum examination. Special note, do not let him do the examination. I think it's pretty clear what they want you to do. Yeah. So in this, what you do, you just uh, uh, repo building, assess their knowledge. How much do you know? I know nothing, doctor. Or if I know I'm going to teach you. And what are the indications? So why you do perspeculum examination? We do perspeculum examination to examine internal, external genitals, organ of the female. That's why we do it, right? So same, same, you just do the teaching part. Repo building, assessing their knowledge, what they want to learn. And is there anything in particular, I mean? Keep your student involved in the conversation. Yeah. Now, so in the beginning, you will tell. So in this station, teaching station, you may not have a patient patient is not there who you have you have got a student and you have got the dummy so you are explaining the student on the dummy and there is no patient in this scenario so you'll explain the patient that uh, uh ankit first of all we're going to explain the whole examination to our patient right that we're going to examine by using this as speculum right and uh, you might feel a bit uncomfortable to be here with us and uh, uh, in case any point you feel uncomfortable you want us to stop let me know we will stop and for the purpose of examination we would like you to uh, undress below your waist and you can have and we will have a chaperone to ensure your privacy as well ankit make sure you are examining the private area of the patient and always make sure you have a chaperone you always have a chaperone with you to ensure her privacy right and what will be the position on it we tell the patient to lie down on the back and bend her knees bring the heel as much as close to the bottom and then knees fall apart on either side of the bed ankit make sure we have got a light source as well that's really important in a gyne examination and one more thing ankit you make sure you don't forget to tell the patient to empty the blood as well right so these are the instructions. See, you do not have the patient. You are explaining all these steps to your student and you will demonstrate it on the mannequin. Make sure you never talk to the mannequin. You are talking only to your student and explaining all these steps to him. Clear? Now, uh, what do you do? Uh, you'll have a speculum and then first you will do the inspection that you can see in the video as well. You will do the inspection and then you will insert the speculum and then you'll comment on the cervix as well. If you have to take the sample, you can take the sample as well. And if the task is telling you just to teach the speculum, then you don't need to go into the smear. Just teach them how to do per speculum examination. All right. Okay. But if the task is somehow telling you or asking you about the pap smear, you need to be very, very careful that you have to rule out the contraindications of the pap smear, right? So these are the contraindications of the pap smear. If the patient is pregnant, you will not be doing the pap smear. If the patient has got recent sexual intercourse, how recent? In the last two, three days. If there is a use of spermicidal jelly, if there is active vaginal bleeding, or if there is any menstrual bleeding, you will not be taking the sample. One thing that I've seen a lot of candidates, they make the mistake. They say these are the contraindication of per speculum. The answer is no. These are not the contraindication of per speculum. These are the contraindication of pap smear. Because see, if a patient is coming to you who's having active vaginal bleeding, am I going to do per speculum examination? I would say I will definitely do it. Yeah, I will definitely do it to see where the bleeding is coming from. But am I going to do the pap smear? The answer is no, because the sample that you will take will be faulty. So these are the contraindication of pap smear. These are not the contraindication of our speculum itself. Do not teach something wrong to Ankit. So we have to be very, very, very careful on this part. Do we have any contraindication for our speculum? To be honest, there is not such contraindication for speculum itself. But yes, sometimes you will see patients have got big birth wounds and uh, it is very difficult for you to insert the speculum or sometimes a patient has got maybe placenta previa maybe rarely you may not be able to do but otherwise in most of the cases you will see you'll be able to do per speculum examination but when the task is for the pap smear you need to be extra careful and you need to make sure uh, 
we don't have these contraindications, right? Keep your student involved in a conversation. Let them ask question if they have got any, and you encourage them asking question and keep them involved. Keep them involved, right? So that's how you can do. There might be another one that you are in the GP. Your patient is Michelle. She is forty. Presents to the clinic for her routine cervical screening. Talk to the patient and do the Pap smear. Okay. That's fine. So what's going to be the thinking here? So first of all, we know for the cervical screening, it's a routine in this country. So what happened from 25 years to 49 years, every three year patient will be getting the call or the appointment letter from the GP surgery. Then from 50 to 64 years, you will be getting this test every five years. After 64, we don't do the test until unless we have got abnormal results previously, right? So that's the thing. Now this patient is coming. So this patient was a teaching. This is done. This is the patient is coming for her routine cervical screening. How are you? How can I help you, doctor? I'm here for my routine cervical screening. Okay. So when was the last screening, doctor? Three years ago. How was it? It was normal. Okay. Perfect. Now, what are the questions that I should be asking? First of all, I'll be asking for the PPP question. Will that be important? Yes, the asking about the period, asking about the uh, pills, asking about pregnancy, asking about previous pap smear, right? And you can even ask about the partner as well. So these are the questions that you can cover. And make sure you are not missing any contraindications of pap smear. Make sense? So this is the question you need to cover. Right? Patients 40, maybe you can ask um, about sexual history, ask about pain during after sex. You can ask about a couple of questions, weight loss, appetite loss, those questions as well. But mainly P question and asking the contraindications of pap smear. What are the contraindications of pap smear? These are the contraindications of pap smear. Usually, you know, whenever uh, the Patients, they get the letter. They don't get the letter uh, straight away for uh, the screening. Like, okay, you are due for screening and come on that day for the screening. No, the letter will say that you are due for your cervical screening and there is a leaflet as well. Just read the leaflet and uh, see if everything is okay and if there is no contraindication, come uh, to the clinic. You can call us and book the appointment for yourself. Because if it says you have to come on... Uh, 3rd of December for the cervical screening, but maybe patient is menstruating, patient is having bleeding, can she go? Not really, it doesn't make sense. So they actually tell the patient, you call us and book the appointment. That's the main thing. Right, so the other questions you can ask, right? And once you get the sample, they might be asking you for thin prep sample. They might be asking for short path sample as well. Mostly they ask for thin prep sample, right? So how to do it? You can check it in the video and then tell that we'll be sending the sample to the lab. They will be able to come back to us within a few days time and then we can update you accordingly. And uh, after this sample, if you get a bit of bleeding or spotting, that's absolutely normal. There's nothing to worry about it. However, if the bleeding is too much, come back to us and we will manage it accordingly. Okay, right, so period, is it important? Yes, because if the patient is on periods, you can't take the sample. Pills, pills are important or not? Pills are not very important, but uh, can I say spermicidal jelly? Because with the pill, I need my contraceptive method. So that thing is very important. Pregnancy is important or not? I think, yes, if patient is pregnant, you can't take the sample because that's a contraindication. Pap smear, you can ask about the previous pap smear, if you have done or not, and what was the report like. And partner, you can ask about the sexual history as well. That's the main thing. Right, so all these questions, if you ask, and then three, four, three minutes, you can take history, and then three, four minutes, you can do the pap smear as well. Right, okay, so that's your pap speculum and pap smear.